This video is something like a follow-up to my OLL PLL tips and tricks video, but concentrating more on just the PLLs. I think that there are a few things that I can say that will help people learn the PLLs, so this video is pretty much about that. So just briefly, PLL is the last stage of the Friedrich method where you move pieces around the cube on the last layer without changing their orientation. So for example, here I have to swap these two corners and these two edges to solve this PLL. Uh, the full PLL requires you to learn 21 algorithms. But uh, if you're a beginner, you can choose to learn, learn only seven of them and perform the two-look PLL. In the first look, you do all the corners. In the second look, you do all the edges. So for example, I have the T permutation here as well. It's the same thing. If I were to do it uh, using the two-look PLL, I would first do the corners, and then I would do the edges. So that was uh, decent, I suppose. But if you were to do a normal PLL, then that would be it. So uh, learning all of those is really a very small price to pay for the increase in speed. Okay, I would now like to show you a web page that I made for the PLLs. Uh, most of these algorithms that you're going to find here are the same algorithms that you can find on uh, cubewiz.com. I find these algorithms to be uh, pretty good for the PLLs, but by the way, be warned that uh, Bob Burton also has a section there for the OLLs, and I had to relearn a good portion of those OLLs. They're not that great. Uh, so just be careful with those. Anyway, so most of the most of the websites organize their algorithms based on arbitrary groups and symmetries that they find, but I organize mine in the order that I think you should learn them in. So in the end here, I have some algorithms that are that are pretty hard to learn, but uh, they do not come up too often, so they're in the back. I will I will now go over the columns briefly. This is the diagram for each case. So the edges you want to swap, the corners you want to swap, etc. This is the algorithm for each diagram. They're all very nice and color-coded as well. <laughs> that actually took me a very long time, so I hope you will appreciate it. I color-coded all the triggers, such as the RURE trigger. It comes up here, 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 just everywhere. I also highlighted symmetries and things like that, so I hope that's going to be useful. Here's a name for each diagram and each algorithm. So uh, when you talk to me or someone else about them, you can clearly refer to them, and we know what we're talking about. This is the chance of occurrence for each case, so if you solve the cube 18 times, you're likely to come into this algorithm once. This is the difficulty to learn each algorithm, which is approximately what I think is uh, correct. I assign them arbitrarily, though. Uh, every row assumes that you already know the rows above it. Also, they are color-coded sometimes like this. This is just kind of like logical groups that I put them in because the algorithms are very similar. Okay, and here we have uh, comments for each algorithm. So I just talk about basically how I memorized each algorithm, and uh, maybe you'll find those useful as well. So as you can tell, this entire page is geared towards helping you remember these algorithms. It's geared towards memorization. If you want tips on how to do better execution, go to Bob's PLL page here. I actually had it open there. Um, you have all the PLLs here, the comments on execution, and he has a video, slow and fast, for each PLL, which I found to be pretty instructive. So I found that to be pretty useful. Okay, now I'll briefly go through some examples of these things that I list there. Uh, just to illustrate some memorization techniques for these uh, algorithms and stuff like that. So uh, the first way to memorize an algorithm is to use notation as your tool to memorize it. A very good example of that is the algorithm UB, because its notation is very easy. So this is the case it's u perm going clockwise, actually counterclockwise, whatever. Uh, notice that it's always an r turn, and then it's a u prime or a u turn. And it always goes u prime, u normal, u normal, u prime. So that's symmetric. So you go r u prime, r u, r u, r u prime. And the last portion you don't even really have to remember, because look that the cube is three moves away from being solved, and you can actually intuitively even see what you need to do to actually solve it. So uh, once you actually met, uh, remember how to do this, you can practice it enough until it becomes muscle memory, and then you won't need to go through this derivation always of how to actually finish it. Uh, you'll just remember it. So that's a way to memorize based on notation. OK, so that was this algorithm right here. You see that I highlighted those parts for you that I talked about. Uh, this algorithm is a very similar thing as well. Uh, you do R to U. RURE trigger, then the last two letters of the RURE trigger, and then you fix up the cube. 
uh, this algorithm is only chance 1 out of 72 to occur, but it's very easy, so I put it here. Notice on the M2s alternate. Uh, I will now show you how you do these three because they are they all use the very very same idea. Okay, I will now show you one way to memorize the T permutation. So we have the T permutation. We will track this F2L pair and this F2L pair. So just concentrate on this one first. I'll do R U R prime U prime, and now I'll do R prime F. So that pair is now there, and that pair was moved to the top layer. So now we want to move this pair away from the top layer. So what we'll do is we'll insert it with these whites. So do an R2, insert it there, and insert it down. So we now kind of have this funky F2L, which is messed up. Uh, now we did all of this just to do a U prime. And now restore everything. So these two have to be with the greens with greens. Restore this and restore that. Also, the G permutation, by the way, the J permutation, I mean, uh, comes for free if you know the T permutation. But you must have the T permutation in your muscle memory. So it'll take some time, get comfortable with the T permutation so that you can do it with your eyes closed, and then you can do this one. All you do is R U R prime, F prime, and now just start doing the T permutation until you solve the cube. Uh, it will sort of be midway of that P T permutation, and you will solve it all by itself. So that's pretty easy. And the Y permutation is pretty analogous to that kind of uh, reasoning with the F12 pairs as well, but check that in the comments. One more way that some people use to remember algorithms is to track patterns on the cube. I can best illustrate using this uh, N permutation. So first I track this corner. So there's some tracking too. I track this corner. It makes a U on the cube as you do this. R, U, L. So the corner is here. Now I do U2 and then align the, or the yellows here, align the yellows in the back and align the yellows and I'll do the exact same thing again. Track that same corner, do that U, U2, align yellows here, yellows there, yellows there and solve. So by remembering those patterns on top and aligning the yellows, I was able to solve that as well. I'll learn also the V permutation. It's a little messed up algorithm, but once you know the V permutation, you know the F for free, because there are very little changes that I highlighted here. So that's basically two algorithms for the cost of one, almost as if. So that's why I put it so high up. I also showed you the M permutation, and this J permutation is very similar to it. I unfortunately don't have time to go into these because I want this to be one video. Uh, the G permutations, even a year after I learned them, I can't think of a simple way to remember the G permutations. I am sorry. Uh, when I learned them, it was just brute force. I just learned it. I still can't think of a good way to do it. I wrote up some stuff. I highlighted some stuff. There is a little bit of pattern to these R's and the U's and how they intertwine, but you're going to have to study that. And you're going to have to just suck it up and learn them. Okay, so finally I'd like to show you guys this uh, program that I wrote just recently. It's called the PLL Trainer. Basically, it generates a random PLL for you, and it tracks your time of execution for that PLL. And then it tracks all the times for all your PLLs, and you can see and compare uh, which PLLs you need to work more on or get better algorithms for, things like that. You can also disable and enable PLLs so that they won't be generated for you if you don't know them. Uh, you can also save and load sessions. So I can basically load a session from two months ago and I can see how much I improved since then and things like that. Uh, you may need to have these pictures rotated because that's not how you recognize your PLL. So just go to the directory that contains the in the program with the program and rotate this, these in MS Paint or Photoshop or even the Windows Image Viewer can do it. And uh, because this program just merely loads those pictures. So uh, I'll now give you a demonstration. I have a cube here. I click start and I execute that PLL and uh, I hit spacebar or something and it saves my time for that PLL. Okay, so I didn't really have enough time to go and depend to anything that I showed you. Uh, the main purpose of the video was basically just to show you the website and uh, the program. So uh, check those out. Um, and also, if you think you have a very good way to remember some PLL or a very good algorithm for it, then you can post a video response and uh, so that other people can uh, see it too, maybe. Okay, that's it. See you.